is Loopline. In this video, I want to go over the Google Mobile Site Tester add-on. Now, if you've been with Scrapebox for some time, there used to be a Mobile Site Tester add-on, and that connected directly with the front end of Google's Mobile Site Tester. Well, Google made it so that's impossible to do, so now there's a Google Mobile Site Tester add-on. Notice the difference there, the name of Mobile Site Tester add-on versus Google Mobile Site Tester add-on, and I'll tell you why that's important in a second. And that uses the PageSpeed Insights API from Google. So we have to set up an API as well as install the add-on, so that's what we're going to cover in this video. Before we do that, or as part of that, let's talk about that. If you are an old Scrapebox user, you probably have this Scrapebox Mobile Site Tester add-on. It's no longer going to work. You cannot install this one anymore. You can only install the Google mobile site tester add-on but this mobile site tester here if you have that um, you can go into the Scrapebox folder and manu manually delete that mobile site tester add-on folder do that with Scrapebox shutdown if it's confusing you otherwise you can just leave it just if you're going through here and you click on it and nothing's working that's why make sure you're using the right add-on so first we go to show available add-ons find the Google mobile site tester add-on in here click it and click install and then we're going to close out of that we go back here again making sure we click on the Google mobile site tester add-on and we're going to launch it once we launch it we're going to see this and basically pretty basic we have all of our stats across here and then we can load URLs from Scrapebox or from file start and stop export settings and then exit and then actual settings so that's where it's important here under settings we have connection options where we can go different things connection timeouts the receive timeout and so you can move these things around as you see fit and as you need to proxy retries um, the defaults that come up which aren't necessarily these the defaults that come up are going to be usually good for most people the delay here um, is important you will talk about adding more than one API key in a minute but Google does have what they call a, a QPS I think it is queries per second or queries per time period um, and they label it different ways in their documentation and they're a little bit vague on what you can do um, but basically you can't go faster than one query per second for sure and sometimes Scrapebox can do that so you basically have to add a delay most people experience like an error dash one um, when they're going too fast and being blocked by Google you also will get that if you don't put in an API key which we need to do but um, so especially if you're getting errors try this two to three seconds usually seems pretty good on the delay if you're adding more than one API then you may not need the delay um, and you can just set this down to zero but I just have one loaded in here which this one's obviously not going to be valid anymore neither is the one we're going to create so don't worry about trying to copy them just go get your own they're free the user agent is in here you could try a different user agent if you had an issue otherwise just leave it alone and you can do more than one Google API key again so that you can have um, avoid the queries per second and go faster as it goes through here it is important to note that it will try each query on its own API key so it'll do the first one and then it's going to use a new API key for the second query a new API key for the third one down the list a new one for the fourth one fourth URL down the list etc also if a proxy is bad like if it tries this one right here and the proxy fails it doesn't just skip this API key it wants to keep an even distribution of, of requests across here so it will just try a new proxy so it auto manages everything you don't have to worry about locking proxies to it It auto manages proxies and everything the only thing you do need to do is before you load the add-on you need to make sure this use proxies box is checked if you want to use proxies if you're using only one API key and you want to use the delay and not use proxies and use your own I IP address that's fine if you want to use more than one API key you need to use proxies so just check the use proxies box and um, part of my password is hidden you can't see it there so obviously don't try to use those proxies either they won't be any good so um, let's go ahead and register a Google API because that's really the only thing we need in order to use this so let's open up this I'm going rather than providing you a URL I'm going to show you how to search for it because Google could change the location and they could change how this works so this is kind of a general guideline if you come in here to do this and it doesn't look exactly the same you should be able to figure it out it's not too complicated and so this is the concept we're just gonna search for it here so let's just do register Google API right um, and we bring up this sort of thing. I'm just going to click on this link. There's probably several but um, that you can go through here. And it, it gives you all this stuff. But go to the Google API console. So you could also just search for Google API console. Um, again, this could change. So that's why I'm using search rather than giving you a link. I'm going to click on that. And here we are. And we're just going to um, get logged into Google. So this is all just standard Google login. So I'm going to do that and then come back. 
So logged in here, just basic Google login, and this is basically where we're at. So we're in the library now, and we can create an API, which is what we need to do. Uh, then we also have dashboard and credentials, and then here is the actual projects to select from. So I'm just going to do create an API, a project rather. You have to create a project, and then you give it a, uh, a API inside that project. So we're just going to call this test project one, whatever. Uh, you can email suggestions, or you can do all this stuff, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. And also, it's note you can create more than one project, and in each project you can create an API. Now, Google isn't clear if their queries per second apply to per project or per an account and they could change it over time so I'm not going to make a statement about how that works but whenever you get around to trying this you can try because it says I have 12 projects remaining I could create multiple projects like say three and then create an API for each one of them and see if it lets me go through there with like three connections or two connections or not so you can try that out if it works for you at the time you're using it great at any time Google could change this of course so try it and see otherwise just create different Google accounts um, and log into each one and create a project and get an API key and actually I need to hit yes here that I agree to the terms of service and now we can create and we'll let that create it just takes a second to create the uh, the whole project and then the project will show up up here in our project drop down again it could be it could vary how this looks google can change it anytime but we can see we have one project here by clicking on it and we can choose that project and so remember google can change this at any time and they they have different things so right here is the page speed a insights api that we need we can also search for it um, I, in a different Google account, this dashboard looked a little bit different uh, as far as like what you saw. So we can enable APIs here under the dashboard and go to the library. Uh, this whole setup was a little bit different, but we can just do, we can also do page speed. Note that it's one word. Page speed insights API. And we're basically going to click on that. And then we're going to enable it. If you don't enable it, even if you create an API key and you go and put it in a scrape box and you fail to enable it, it won't work either. You get an error dash zero one or dash one or some other error. So we have to enable it. And once it's enabled, then we can see this sort of thing and we can go to the library um, or to credentials rather, and we can create credentials. So we need to create an API key. And here's our API key. We're just going to grab this and copy it. We don't need to restrict it or anything because we're not doing an app. We're just putting it in Scrapebox. So we can bring Scrapebox back up, go to add-ons, mobile site tester add-on, and we're going to go to settings. And I'm just going to get rid of all that. And we're just going to use the one we just created so that we can see that it works. It put a space on the end there. I'm going to delete that uh, and make sure it didn't put a space in front. And it did. So I'm going to delete that. Very important. Make sure there's no preceding or trailing spaces and hit close. And OK, we have it on once connection. OK, got a timeout or delay there and I'm going to load in some URLs. So let's just grab some URLs here and we'll do a quick harvest just from Bing and grab some URLs. Done. Scrape box and hit start and it'll process using the API we just created. And if we did everything correctly, we will get data in here and I'll just pause it while it goes through here for just a minute. Okay, and a few have completed. Um, we can see green for mobile friendly and it goes red or pink when it is not mobile friendly. And then we see other things over here, the score um, and this sort of thing, viewpoint fixed with whatever. Uh, and you can scroll across and you can go to the Google mobile site friendly website and kind of look at what some of these metrics mean. Um, and this is just telling you the scores, why, why it's failing. So targets too close, font too small, contact size to viewpoint, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the um, Google mobile site tester add-on. That's how you can register an API key. And like I said, you can go in here and actually create more projects. So I can hit plus here and create a second project and call it whatever the world I want and create it. Um, and then once that's actually created, then I could go in and go here to that particular project and click on it and open that one up and then go here to credentials and create credentials and create an API key. And then now I have another API key and I have multiple projects. So that may work um, or it may not, depending on how Google does that over time. But anyways, we can go back here. We can see it's still chugging along. So set it up, read it with however many connections you need. Just if you go too fast and get blocked, you're going to get an error. If you fail to enable the page speed API after you've created your regular, you know, your API account in your project, 
then it's not going to work. And obviously we have to go to Google and create an account and an API. And that is the Google Mobile Site Tester add-on. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell. And then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.